All right, hey, hey, everybody, RV enthusiasts here. Nice seeing you again. Hey, today we're on another hay bike adventure. We have another unboxing. The hay bike ranger. So this is the second bike hay bike he sent me. And we are gonna do a lot of videos on this bike, guys. Um, maybe not always uh, just an unboxing and a ride and, and these component kind of things and, and the uh, accessories, accessories we put on it. But we're going to do a lot of maintenance on this bike. So this bike was given to me for one reason. They want me to do some maintenance on it. Easy enough. I, I like doing maintenance. I like doing uh, projects. So let's get started unboxing this one. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look inside the box and see what, what goodies came with it. Alright, so we have a couple of pedals, a left and a right pedal, foldable by the way. We have another cap for a, a nut. Some nice shiny tools and bits and a manual. And then we have the charger for the battery. So output is 54.6 volts at 3 amps. So this is a little bit faster charger, I believe, than the uh, Mars charger. The connection for, for the hay bike. That's the connection plug for the battery. That's probably the best plug on the market, at least that I see. Okay, we're back. Now we have to take all this uh, foam wrapping off. In some cases we have zip ties, in other places we have tape. And we'll just start taking the zip ties and tape off. One of the big differences in the Mars and the Ranger is the Ranger comes with mag wheels very nice don't have to worry about truing them uh, just put them on maintain your air pressure and your tires you're good to go now at this point I would take the battery out but the key somewhere around here I haven't found it yet but once I find that key I'm sure it's on the handlebar somewhere I will clip that off we'll pull the battery out start charging it right away Especially if you're anxious to ride it. Something you really want to do is charge that battery right away. There's a minimum here. You don't want to be below this if you're a tall person. Alright, good enough for now. I know this isn't tight because I can move it. But I'm going to start undressing the bike still. And it doesn't surprise me that uh, the little bolt and a few pieces came off. Uh, when the FedEx guy was delivering it, he was giving it a little bit of a roll. And I was like, no, 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 no. We'll carry it. I'll help you. We'll carry it. But he had it up on end, starting to roll it. So if that happened in front of me, imagine what happens when you're not seeing it. All right, I think that's as undressed as I'm going to get it. And now we'll start putting some of it together. All right, guys. When we're putting in the pedal, we just set it, feel the screw hole, or feel the, the screws, the threads, and just keep going until you feel them catch. Don't be in a rush. They will go in. And you don't want to cross thread them. You want to make sure they go in pretty good. Right there. All right. So once you catch them, you'll know. And it, it'll they'll thread pretty easily. Once you get them started, then just tighten that pedal up. Now the R pedal goes on the right side of the bike. If you're looking forward like you're riding the bike. Once 
Once you get it close, just take a little bit of strength and go down on it. That's all there is to putting the pedals on. All right, guys, so now we're ready to put the uh, wheel on. So you'll notice that we have the skewer. We have a small um, spacer on this side. We have a large spacer on this side. So basically we just take the skewer. This is probably already done for you. Mine happened to fall off uh, due to shipping. Um, the FedEx tumbling, tumbling my box. So the small one goes on the side that the rotor is on and the large one goes on the opposite side. Very simple. And the reason we're, it is is because the way the rotor sits, it has to be positioned a certain way for that caliper to grab it properly. So, so I just took all the nuts and bolts off just to make this easier. So we're just going to lift it up. We're going to rotate the tire in. And I'm looking between the caliper and right there. Very easy to do it that way, guys, rather than fighting it um, with the bolts and the spacers and all that other stuff. So now... Let's put this side on. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the, uh, the retention clip on. Retention clip goes in the hole. Then the washer. Then the bolt. Now, if you think you're going to touch the rotor with your hands, put a pair of gloves on, uh, rubber or otherwise, and that'll keep you from touching that. Now, on this side, we're going to put the retention clip. The washer. And the bolt. And now, I want to make sure I got just about as much on both sides as I, as I have uh, on one side as the other. And only because it matters to me. Probably doesn't matter to anyone else. And I think that's enough. Alright, so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my caliper because I have the space there. And it looks like I can fairly well get it centered. Uh, if I don't, I'm going to have to adjust the brakes. I'll have to adjust the brakes anyway. So kind of what I do is I put my finger here and, my, and, my, and the same finger on this side and see if that's the same amount of space. It seems to be. And we also want to make sure that we're, we're down in that fork properly. And I can see that I, I can see the space in the caliper. So between the caliper and the rotor. So that's pretty nice actually. All right, there we go. I might give it one more little little snug just because I'm uh you know, you just don't want that to fall off any, any time on you. Okay, good. Okay, now the front wheel's on. And I'm going to lift it up and give it a slight spin. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. All right. Now, now we're going to put the uh, fender on. So on the fender, we're just going to take, put it here, set it here for now. Then we're going to take the lamp, and we're going to put the lamp. First, I'm going to take my bolt apart. <laughs> 
think then I'll just put this washer in here, the, the bolt in. Then I will take and put the lamp on. And the lamp, I can put it in any position right now because it's uh, loose. And then I'm going to take my fender and put it on and try to hold the fender into place while I put the washer. Now I'm going to take the 10 millimeter wrench, put it on the bolt behind. I think I can come up in here if I want, and I can. So I'll just put the wrench right here. And I'll come up here and I'll tighten this till I get it a little bit snug. And really I find as, as snug as I can get this, there's always a little wiggle room in this uh, fender that you can uh, straighten out any little bit of uh, crookedness you have. I find that the, the case on most of these e-bikes, actually. I haven't found one yet that I, I that's not like that. Okay, so that's done. I'm just going to look at the fender. It looks pretty good, actually, and the light looks pretty good. So now, before I finish and go lower on the fender, I'm just going to take and plug this in. Make sure you match these up. There's an indent on one, otherwise you'll bend a pin. You won't like it. Simple as that. Very simple to do. Okay, so that's done. Now all I have to do is, on these uh, fender stays, in my washer, the bolt and washer should be in here. I unscrewed it, take it out, take this, put it in here like so, bring the, bring the stay up to the fender, And you'll feel it go. It's gone. It's on. Get your other bolt and washer. Kind of get it to sit on there and hold it with a finger. Take and turn this around. There's your other fender stay right there. Then tighten that on. Now, there we have it. Now my thing, my my stays might have been bent by uh, packaging. This ordinarily, if it were straight, this would be a little further away from the wheel. So I think this was bent in shipping. If you already own one of these, let me know. Easy enough to bend back out a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that's further out. That's better. All right, so that's done. Is a close up of the front. So I showed you from a distance. This is just a, a, an Allen with a bolt on the back. You just take this off. Put the put the the fender on and just screw it together. Not real difficult, guys. All right, guys. Now we're gonna put the handlebars on. It's a pretty simple task. You just take, feed this spline in here, tip the tip the handlebars over. And what we're gonna do? We're gonna true the we're gonna stand between the tire and the handlebars. 
And I'm just going to bring the handlebars up just like I was riding it, just like that. Look straight down my seat and down the back rack. And I tip it over a little bit. And I tighten some more. Okay, now I know that's, that's tight enough to keep it from moving. Real easy, so I just tip that back up. I look at it, make a little micro adjustment. That's it. And now I tighten this uh, Allen head that's in here uh, snugly. I'll move this over a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm reaching in here and I'm tightening this back up. And that's good. Bring that back up straight. Click it in, and that's all there is to installing those handlebars. A real simple, easy task, guys. Okay, also, on the on the Haybike Mar um, Mars, my edition, which is an early edition, doesn't have these uh, rack holder or um, basket holder. So, uh, this one has it. The Ranger has it. So, I do have a basket that I can attach to this. Uh, from the hay bike Mars days. So that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, that's about all I would need to show you close up on the bike. All right. <clears throat> so first thing we got to do is push the on button. That'll turn the display on. Now there are two mode buttons on the side. One is just to dim it for riding at night and the other is to brighten it up. Then if you push the upper mode button, that changes your trip miles, your total miles ridden, and uh, and some other settings. Uh, let's see. I'll put my glasses on and see if I can see them. Uh, your average uh, speed, trip, odometer, and maxes. The max miles you've ridden. Okay. So from there, you have uh, a plus button, which takes you up to this is your PAS level. Then you push the down button, and that's uh, PAS2 and PAS1, and then PAS0. So those are your PAS settings. So we'll move it back up to 3. Now, if you, it doesn't matter which one you're in, but if you push the plus and minus at the same time, that'll put you into the hidden menus. Now these menus will reset your trip computer uh, and things like that. Um, and that's, I think, your backlight level. Um, and then other, other things in the menu I don't know about yet, but we will figure those out. Then turn that off. We just hit the off button again. Now we'll turn it back on one more time. And we'll show you the light. There's the light. Now it's sitting a little high, so I will lower the light a little bit better. So now the light is sitting uh, more proper for, for viewing. So I'll turn the light off. Uh, I showed you the horn button. Here's your throttle. This is your throttle for your uh, speed. And then this is your shifter. Your 7-speed Shimano shifter. Alright guys, once your battery's charged up, just lift the seat up, take the battery, set it on this rail, and slip it all the way down. If you didn't feel it click, just kind of Set it down a little bit hard, and it'll click into place. Then you just turn this. Now, that is locked in and turned off. Now you can turn this down, or you can lift this back up. Try to pull it out. It doesn't come out. There is also a USB port on the side if you need to charge something different. And then push this. Now you're on the on position. All right, now you can see I've got my big uh, ring light that I'm using. Pretty eyes, right? <laughs> That's all ring light, guys. Um, I, I use that just to help me uh, get a closer, better view uh, rather than all black. You know, because it's all black, it does make it a little more difficult to see. So I use that ring light to assist me in uh, help, helping film. 
All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, just, just a real quick unboxing and uh, some of the heads up on some of the pieces. Um, it's a great bike. The only thing I really didn't talk about much is the the uh, 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery. Uh, that's one of those kind of I, I don't know if it's the right name, but they call them silverfish batteries. And I don't know if that's a cut to silverfish or to hay bike or whatever, but it's the same style of of, of uh, battery pack. And uh, I just think they're the that that hay bikes for a battery that is visible. You know, a lot of them here. I'll just show you. Even on the Mars, a lot of people put it inside this tube on a folding bike, so it's hidden. Um, hay bike on theirs puts it on the back. Um, you know, I guess you could say it's exposed to the elements, but, uh, I don't think I've, I don't think it's a bad deal. I think the way it's set up, um, I kind of like it. It, it. I think it actually gives you maybe even a little bit more length, uh, in the bike to, to keep it a little bit more, um, um, the ratio a little better. I don't know if that's true. Just my thought and opinion. And, uh, I, I have no no real reference to that because I only have two hay bikes that fold. Um, but this was a pleasure to put together, a pleasure to film, and uh, start looking forward to these because we'll go over the more in detail on this bike. And like I said, we'll take the crank off. I don't know if on this one um, I'll buy a bigger uh, crank uh, tooth, front tooth for that, teeth for that because um, this one really feels pretty good to me, um, but we're going to use this bike as a um, kind of a maintenance bike. We're going to take it apart in every aspect. I think there's 10 videos Hay Bike would like me to, uh, to do. Now, that doesn't include any kind of ride video that I want to do. It really didn't include the unboxing. It's not going to include uh, accessories that I put on the bike. It's not going to include... Um, talking about each individual components. Haybike has listed out 10 different things. Um, one is that, two is changing a tire, um, I think three is working on the derailleur, four is adjusting the brakes. Uh, I'll do brakes front and back on that uh, segment there. And, um, and just different items. And I'm and oh one is the sensor undoing the 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 cadence sensor acting like you were replacing the cadence sensor. I'm sure if I break anything, hey bike will just ship me a new one and we'll have to put a new one on. But I don't anticipate any of that happening. Um, and uh, they've just been very kind to me. And uh, yeah, I I thank them for that. This is going to be a great fun project. Oh, one of them is taking the display off and taking all that kind of stuff off and the hand grips and the and the 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 brake levers. So we we got a bunch of work we're going to do over the winter here and um I'm actually looking very forward to it. And uh there you go. That's what we're doing with this. All right. I appreciate you for joining me and we'll catch you on the next episode. Make sure to like, share and subscribe.